Once, when America was still extremely awesome, presidents had a tendency to be developers. They constructed things like the interstate highway system, which started, in 1956, under Dwight D. Eisenhower, a Republican, whose pundits called it a climb into the stratosphere of New Deal jitterbug financial matters, or they constructed security from radioactive pollution, as when John F. Kennedy marked the Limited Nuclear Test Ban Treaty, in the fall of 1963, under two months previously he was killed, or they looked to fabricate residential strategy frameworks, for example, Lyndon B. Johnson did keeping in mind the end goal to give reasonable medicinal services to elderly and low-pay Americans, which drove, in 1965, to Medicare and Medicaid, enactment that most likely would stand no possibility of going in the present Washington. However, in the event that a destroying ball could change itself into a presidency, it would look much like the one that has been formed by the president we now have, Donald J. Trump. The interstate framework is likely sheltered, and an aid to the non-renewable energy source industry, aside from, maybe, from potholes. The Clean Air Act, first marked into law in December, 1963, still stands, however the Environmental Protection Agency needs to undermine it by cancelling the Clean Power Plan, which plans to diminish the toxins of the coal business, and the organization, drove by Scott Pruitt almost certainly has more thoughts of that sort. The Affordable Care Act has been under assault as far back as it was passed, in 2010, however, as opposed to endeavor to enhance it, as Senators Lamar Alexander, a Tennessee Republican, and Patty Murray, a Washington Democrat, had hoped to do, Trump appears to be out to crush it, and, as Amy Davidson Sorkin as of late composed. He doesn't appear to mind how that may influence the individuals who require it most. Steve Bannon, Trump's previous strategist, has presumably what his ex-supervisor expected in closure the government sponsorships. Going to explode that thing, Bannon said on Saturday. Going to explode those trades, ideal? In additionally indications of lack of respect for crafted by his ancestors, Trump has pointed a destroying ball at the North American Free Trade Agreement, and, to the caution of his own senior consultants, the atomic manager ran. That will undoubtedly make more tumult, however Trump has shown himself to be adroit at turmoil. At the point when the country recoups from this peculiar, bewildering, and vandalized period, thanks will go to individuals like Senator Bob Corker, the Tennessee Republican, whose steadfastness to Trump had been durable, unfaltering, and, now and again, somewhat indecent, until, at long last, it wasn't. One meaning of bravery is an ability to stand up while your companions stay quiet, and Corkar, among Republicans in Congress, is basically alone in communicating caution at the shenanigans, tweets, and by and large lopsided conduct of the president, albeit different Republicans, for example, Senators James Lankford, of Oklahoma, Jeff Flake, of Arizona, and Ben Sass, of Nebraska, appear to be uneasy as well. Corker's current remarks, most substantively in a discussion with Jonathan Martin, of the Times, were exceptional, and may have been driven by the engine of enthusiastic obligation, by the possibility that somebody needs to state something, and if not presently, when. Corker isn't looking for re-election, which has managed him a measure of freedom. However, his fortitude was in any case genuine, and his perspective exasperating. He obviously trusts that the country committed a disastrous error when it chose as president somebody as unfit, as ignorant, as nonsensical, and as unready as Trump. Corker's tweeted portrayal of the White House as an a grown-up day mind focus, attempting to deal with a fit of raging Klein 71-year-old, was, he stated, a worry shared by about each Senate Republican, almost every silent Senate Republican, he may have said. He remained in stamped difference to his gathering's implied congressional pioneers, Speaker of the House Paul D. Ryan and Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell, who appear to be fine with pretty much everything that Trump says and does, notwithstanding when he demonstrates hatred for them. On Monday, Trump figured out how to state both that he could see completely how Steve Bannon feels in proclaiming war on the Republican Foundation, and, of McConnell, that we're most likely now. I think at any rate the extent that I'm concerned, nearer than at any other time. See, 
aside from a couple of individuals, most by far of our council comprehends what we're managing here, Corker said. He included, obviously they comprehend the unpredictability that we're managing and the gigantic measure of work that it takes by individuals around him to keep him amidst the street. Corker was especially worried about the undermining of Secretary of State Rex Tierson, who is among those endeavoring to shield Trump from running off the street. On Friday, Corker told the Washington Post's Jackson deal that Trump may have made a circumstance that could constrain the United States to pick amongst war and tact in managing the atomic danger postured by North Korea and Iran. You can't openly mutilate your own particular Secretary of State without giving yourself that double decision. In late July, toward the finish of a Senate subcommittee hearing, an amplifier near Senator Susan Collins, a Maine Republican, discovered her talking about Trump's obliviousness about the financial plan, and Senator Jack Reed, a Rhode Island Democrat, saying, Yes. I think, I believe he's insane, a reasonable reference to the president. I'm concerned, Collins said. So is the nation. A current Quinnipiac survey demonstrated that 56 for every penny of respondents trust that Trump is unfit to serve. That is not really an astonishment, the country, all things considered, is confronting something that used to be a start to move the plot of Washington potboilers, what is to be done if a president is shaky, and needs to accomplish something genuinely neglectful. That inquiry was at the core of Corker's discussion with the Times. I know beyond a shadow of a doubt that each and every day at the White House, it's a circumstance of endeavoring to contain him," he said. Seventy a few years back, David Lilienthal, the main executive of the Atomic Energy Commission, writing in his diary, made an inquiry that should have been asked when Trump, at the United Nations, debilitated to thoroughly demolish North Korea, bringing up a definitive issue about present-day war. Isn't the genuine risk to human advancement to be found in the acknowledgement that fighting is not anymore a contention inside breaking points forced by ethical quality, yet unbounded, without moral control? What, he may have included, if the destroying ball is being gone for progress itself, 